teammates, welcome back to Teaching with Tania. I am Tania, of course, and welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new, I just wrapped up my first year teaching. And if you wanna check out my last day of school video, um, with my student interviews, go ahead and check that out. It was super sweet. You guys get to see a little bit of my students' personalities, which was so much fun. I had a blast this year just learning and teaching with them. I feel like they will forever be in my heart forever. But in this video, I'm talking about everything that I've learned in the fourth quarter as a first year teacher. It's a little bittersweet that it's the fourth quarter already. I remember doing my first quarter one and I was like, oh my goodness, the school year seems so far away, but nonetheless it is here and we have wrapped up the last day of school so be sure to check that out so going back to the beginning of the first quarter we had just finished or well, we were in the middle of state testing and let me tell you guys State testing takes a long time. At my school, we did it every other day, depending on the section and things like that, just so that students wouldn't get burnt out and their brains were able to focus and do the best that they can. It just felt like it was dragging out. It took like three weeks. In between that time, I feel like it was super productive. Just going over skills that they needed to learn or that, it, that they didn't need to forget, just like practice skills, things like that. So that's the first thing I learned is that testing takes a long time. And so now going into my second year, that's another thing. If you guys don't know, I will be teaching third grade ELA, same classroom, different students all over again. And I know what I did this year and taking everything that I learned in the first, second, third and fourth quarter and implementing it next year so that I could become a bigger and better teacher. And that's another thing. I'm glad that I'm documenting this because first of all, if you're not reflective, if you're not a reflective teacher, then I'm not sure what you're doing, but taking the time to realize what worked this year and what didn't work this year, of course, every student is different. And then you as a teacher learn and grow. So it's important to have these reflections and think about actually what we're doing. I know the school year can be so go, 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 but just to take a moment and relax and figure out, okay, this didn't work or this did work, I feel like it's super important. The second thing that I learned is that even though you have like eight weeks for this fourth quarter, it flies by super fast. And I know um, there are a few holidays in between there, but making the most of your time, for example, if you have um, a lesson or like an assembly in between that time, making the most of it. I have had to reconfigure my lessons multiple times also, patience in the fourth quarter is real. <laughs> it would definitely test your patience, but I feel like just being able to be flexible, like I've said in other videos, being able to be flexible and then also move your lesson to the next lesson or just get what the students essentially need in that lesson, um, making sure they're practicing those skills and getting everything they need out of that lesson, I feel like was so important and what I learned in the second. That's the second thing I learned in the fourth quarter. I learned is that sometimes it will feel like as you're teaching you're pulling teeth like sometimes students are just like you could feel summer is right around the corner especially with the hot and cold days like all the hot days they were super excited and had a bunch of energy and I'm like why isn't this working why is what I'm doing now the same exact thing why is it not working in the fourth quarter and I had to realize I had to go over expectations expectations literally almost every week what do we do here what do we do here what do we do here because we forgot how to line up correctly or we forgot how, that we push in our chairs to be safe or that we raise our hand and don't shout out and i know it could be super especially me i'm speaking for me i'm not sure about you guys in the fourth quarter i got really lenient and i'm like oh my students know the expectations i don't have to hammer it into them as much but trust me you do go over any expectations no matter you think they know it or not or some students may be following them and other students may not be but going over as a class and i had to do this for both of my blocks this is how we do this and this is how we do it. it's like going over routines and expectations literally all the way up until like their last week of school because <laughs> let me tell you i had to repeat myself several times we had to stop wait pause until some of our friends got it correctly but taking that time i feel like made me not pull my hair out and they knew with the expectation is just, sometimes you get tired of saying the same thing over and over and over again as a teacher, but hey, that's the life we live and I wouldn't have it any other way. So this kind of leads into my fourth point, which is if you relax, your students will relax. And that's like a no-go. So I remember one day, all we did was small groups for a day because whole group instruction was just not being effective. So I was like, oh, we need to do small groups 
one day and I switched up our routine. Wrong answer. Um, we went right back doing the whole group, small group or our regular routine because if you relax or if you switch something up, your students will notice and feel like it's a free for all when it's not. So keep teaching, keep hitting the hammer on the head or like nitpicking small things. Like for example, the calling out, I had to nip that in the bud or even just some behaviors that it's the summertime, you just think that is okay, but really it's not, so I had to nip that in the bud as well. So making sure I stay really tight on all my classroom management, like I did at the beginning of the year and the end of the year is super important, which is what I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> and the fifth thing that I learned is that your students will grow up. Like they're not the little, third graders, like in my case, then they were not the little third graders that you had at the beginning of the year. They just grow up, you can see them maturing and getting taller or even like seeing some of those like little kid behaviors fizzle out because they are getting older, they're starting to, let's just say there's a switch, there's a positive switch. And once, like I teach them to be leaders and to advocate for themselves and things like that. So to see them actually doing that and see the progress from quarter one to quarter four is literally mind blowing. Like they grow up right before your eyes and I thought, that if you thought time was going by fast, you look at them and you blink, like especially after spring break, a winter break, spring break, they're just growing like no tomorrow. It's like, wow. Even now in the fourth quarter, things that I was saying to them, like try your best or make sure that you're putting forth your great effort. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm never asking students to be perfect. I'm just asking for their best. And for them to repeat it back to me is like, <sighs> that's when I almost cried. Like, as you know, as teachers, some days can be really hard but to see them grow and absorb the things that you're teaching them. And of course, we're just planting seeds right now. We may not see the full effect of their blossom or their full bloom until they're older, but to see little pockets of positive behavior or behavior change due to behavior plans and just attitudes changes, it just made me so happy. So you will see them grow. And I've learned that I have to plant, continue to plant those seeds next year from the beginning. Even though you don't see the fruits of them now, you will see them later on. So the next thing that I learned is that you have to keep teaching, of course, but also during this time of the year, you have to reach really deep into your teacher tool bag and find ways to re-engage your students. I found this really fun um, by even having them teach the class. I think I touched on this in another video, but having them teach the class or giving them ownership of their learning, especially now if you show them how to do it, how to um, advocate and engage in their learning, now it's up to them to do it. They had a good time doing that because they got to engage and partner with their own peers in their learning. And I found that very helpful, especially when students are mentally checked out because it is a fourth quarter. How can you re-engage them? And I've done a video on this as well, talking about your secret secret. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Your secret sauce to teaching. <laughs> your secret sauce to teaching, I feel like, is how you re-engage the students even when they don't want to be there sometimes or when they're just not putting forth their best effort. How can you re-engage them? So I did a bunch of different activities that went along with our learning, our curriculum, and our objective objectives to um, re-engage them and make them want to come back. And I sometimes even left them on a cliffhanger, like, hey, tomorrow we're doing this, especially the ones that love to write essays or just doing stuff that I know they will like, especially the activities that they get to draw on the whiteboards and things like that. How are you re-engaging your students? And I feel like I had to pull a lot of teacher tricks out of my back to make sure they were learning still in the fourth quarter. This next one is a little personal because it definitely um, teaches, or it definitely points to you as a teacher or you as, a student, as the students. Um, but what you did in the first quarter will show in the fourth quarter. And I mean this by like people putting in effort or like students that like played around a small group and um, the students that worked really hard to get their reading level up or practice reading um, when they have free time and things like that. Like all of that, what they did or didn't do will show later on. I feel like this goes for anything in life. Like what you do today will affect your year or two for now. Like at the end of the day, like every day matters. And I try to teach that to my students all the time. And it's like, wow, I could look back at my journal, at my teaching journal and see where this worked or where I tried this with this student and it did or it didn't work. Or when I switched a strategy or a teaching routine for this student and it actually did work. It definitely came together. I feel like fourth quarter was like putting a bow on everything. This touched back to the other one I said, which is about like seeing their progress and that just made my teacher heart very happy. Another thing I had to learn is that every child is different and you cannot compare students. 
I feel like I did not determine my success based off of data or based off of a child's capabilities. I looked at where they started when they came to me as opposed to where they came to me and then where they ended up. And that years of growth and gaps are how I filled those gaps and things like that. That's how I measure the success of my year. And at the end of the day, like I am super proud of each and every one of my students because even when like we weren't connecting or I feel like they weren't um, reaching their potential, every little step along the way, every decodable word, every little block that they had, they have a bunch of obstacles throughout the year, but every time they met it and overcame it, and we celebrated those victories and seeing them move up our data wall, that just made my heart so happy because teaching is tough, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and I used to say it was hard, but it's all it was all relative. Whatever I think is hard, it's gonna be hard. I feel like when my students saw that they were making progress, like it was like a snowball effect. They just kept wanting more and more and more and more and more to see themselves read faster or to see them decode words faster or even just answer questions. Like going back in the text, that was a struggle for many of my students this year. We just didn't have a fun time going back into the text. And when I made them be like detectives in the text, okay, this is the question that is asking. We have to go back in the text and look for it. And just like things like that, that I had to reach back into my teacher toolkit again to um, figure out that strategy to help re-engage my students. I've learned that even though it worked for that student, like another student may have had progress somewhere else, you know? So I can't measure my students based off of what I think they should be or what people are telling me they should be doing when I see that this is a major growth point for them as opposed to where we were from the beginning of the school year. And also every kid has a different stage of development. And I think that sometimes school systems tell us that they have to be here by this point, this point, this point. Like, yes, there is some truth to that. Every student learns at a different pace. And I feel like as teachers, it's important to make sure they're hitting these mile markers, but at their own pace and developmentally, especially with the whole pandemic and things that we, the students have gone through, like we have to give them grace in some areas, but also hit hard on um, like learning their letter sounds and things like that as a ELA teacher. So to see students like come in not knowing any letter sounds to now reading full on words, what better can you ask for, you know, as a teacher? Another thing that I learned is you cannot put limits on kids. For example, whatever you expose them to, like kids will, they're like sponges. They will soak up anything that you teach them. And I feel like it's been an honor to be their teacher because things that I thought that they were, this was like too high for them or even like fourth or fifth grade level words, they were able to decode it. And it's like, don't put limits on their kids. Like even though they're in third grade, if I would have put limits on this kid can't learn or this kid can't learn. First of all, that's a, just a terrible mindset because you just never know what that kid is capable of. So I teach everything to the whole class and then what students need a, need another um, doses of it or another way of like visualizing it. Just need a lesson taught one more time to them so that they can get it. Repetition, of course, is important for learning. Do that in a small group and then it will click in their head. So like just finding different ways to reach a student even though you may think this is above their grade level, this is below their grade level, whatever it is, just having them get exposure to it, you have no idea what that kid can learn. And so I have learned since the beginning of the year, don't put stereotypes, don't put limitations on students because they will exceed your expectation most of the time, each and every time. <laughs> Last but not least, I feel like now that it is the end of the year, I feel like I can literally conquer the world. Like I survived my first year of teaching, not only survived, but thrived in my first year of teaching. Of course, I had sad days and ups and downs and hurdles, but it's nothing compared to what people will try to scare you, like people will try to like scare, scare you out of your calling because they're like, teachers don't get paid that much or teachers, they're a stressful job and things like that. But I feel like if you're built for it, why not? <laughs> now I literally feel like back and conquer the world because I have taught 32 third graders and we not only met expectations, but exceeded expectations. And I'm just so proud of my students. And that really just puts a cap on this year for the 2022, 2023 school year. And I know when I look back on this, I'm gonna be like, wow. My first year of teaching was amazing. And I'm even just basking right now, like to have the best group of students that were most of the time willing and able to learn. Of course, like when you're little and you dream of having your own classroom, it's like, oh, uh, you just never know what you're gonna get. But my students have been absolutely exceptional this year and even the ones that um, gave me a little bit of a challenge, of course we all have those students, they 
still made it fun for me. I couldn't have asked for a better classroom, first year group of students to teach and they would forever be in my heart. I think that's all for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to this fourth quarter reflection as I end my first year of teaching. Don't forget to create a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.